Welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And in this set of videos, we're going to cover the theory for chapter 16, how to read, analyze, and interpret financial reports. And just as an FYI, um, this chapter is a lot more dense, um, a lot more knowledge heavy um, as compared to all of the other chapters. And so therefore, this uh, set of videos is not going to be one, two, or three. I mean, I'm not going to be able to tell you how many there are or even come close. I'm just going to go as I, as I deem when I'm making the videos. Okay, so just be, you know, be prepared. You're going to see more than one, two, or three videos. Um, also, too, you know, the name of this chapter is How to Read, Analyze, and Interpret Financial Reports. And I kind of find that this is sort of like a misnomer, um, right? First of all, I mean, yeah, the financial reports. Uh, accountants don't really refer to the reports as financial reports. We refer to them as financial statements. So you'll see me all, uh, more often than not using the term financial statements versus financial reports. Um, Understand that this here is math for business and finance and math applications, and this here is like an introductory subject. I mean, it's a you know a first semester subject, so uh, it's at a very very ten thousand foot view, a very high level. Okay, and I think the reason why they, the authors called this read, analyze, and interpret financial reports is because when they said read, basically this is what um, they're going to look like. Analyze, they're going to cover some ratios. Uh, interpret, um, you know, you're going to have some trend analysis. Um, but really this, I think what they should have named this chapter was an introduction to financial statements. Okay, so um, just realize that I'm using the words financial statements instead of reports and um, even though this is going to be a very heavy chapter, um, yeah, I mean, it is only on a very introductory level. So let's go on to the next slide here. And okay, and what I'm going to do here is on this uh, slide is to give you an overview of what's going to be covered in these uh, however many videos it takes here. All right, so we're going to cover why financial reports slash statements and a report card for your company. Then we're going to talk about uh, format for a balance sheet and format for an income statement. Now realize that you know, they're saying financial reports and I had said financial statements. All businesses have a balance sheet and an income statement, okay, period. Um, however, that doesn't mean that's the end of them all, okay? I mean, there's a statement of cash flow, statement of retained earnings. If you look at cost accounting, you know, there's a whole slew of uh, uh, manufacturing uh, statements that can be created. Accountants can create different statements that suits their needs. So by no means is this an end-all, be-all of all of the financial statements. However, the balance sheet and the income statement, you know, are going to be presented. Like I said, this is a high-level introductory and you, you can't get around looking at a balance sheet or an income statement. Um, we're also going to cover a comparative analysis. Right? Now, for a comparative analysis, it's done in two forms, either in a vertical form or as a or in an or in a horizontal form. Okay, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on a balance sheet, but not the income statement. Um, look in the textbook to see what it looks like for an income statement, right? Um, it's not, you know, the comparative analysis is not about a balance sheet or about the income statement. It's about a vertical analysis or horizontal analysis. And the application, uh, you know, as it applies to the balance sheet, applies equally to the income statement. And that's why I'm not going to show you the income statement. Look in your textbook if you want to see what that looks like. Okay, um, we'll cover trend analysis. Right. And we'll also cover ratio analysis. Now, you know, I've listed these ratios here, which are which are what are covered in the in the textbook. But realize by no means are that these are all of the ratios that you possibly can have. OK, um, it's not. All right. There's a lot more. But, you know, these are the most 
common ones uh, or ones that are kind of like looked at depending upon the situation. Um, so that's why they're in the textbook. And I'd also like to point out right now, um, you know, everything that you're going to get, I mean, you know, when you think about your education, okay, we're talking about math for business and finance. And up until this point in time, you know, what did we do? We did ratios, percentages, you know, things like this. I mean, you're, you're always going to use that math in the rest of your education when it comes to business and, and finance, okay? Um, you know, you may not always use the time value of money. Um, like, for example, uh, you're not going to use time value of money when you're talking about managerial accounting unless, of course, you're managing, you know, something that requires the use of that particular concept, okay? Um, things like the time value of money or these ratios, you're going to see again and again and again throughout your education. Now, anybody who's just taking, uh, you know, who's in a business curriculum that isn't accounting or finance, you know, you're going to have this math for business and finance. You're going to have math, uh, financial accounting, and you're going to have managerial accounting. Well, guess what? In all three of those subjects, you're going to have the time value of money concepts that you had in the previous chapters. And you're also going to see these ratios. You're going to see them in this textbook. You're going to see them again in the financial accounting textbook. And you're going to see them again in the managerial accounting textbook. Now, here's the thing. Um, you know, it amazes me how many students fail the managerial accounting exams, the final exam, okay? Um, when a um, um, good portion of that exam was ratio analysis, you know, the stuff that you have in this this textbook and in the math and the financial accounting textbook and they're saying it a third time in the managerial accounting textbook um, it, it just boggles my mind how someone can see the material three different in three different subjects and yet still not be able to pass or get them wrong on their managerial final uh, final exams okay um, so that's just a word to the wise is you know definitely pay attention to these ratio analysis now I had said you know, if you watched my other videos, um, I'm one about understanding an application, about understanding the concepts, and then being able to apply it. And I had said that I don't memorize, okay? Um, I can make a case for ratio analysis here in that I can understand, for example, what the current ratio is. I don't have to memorize current assets over current liabilities, okay? Um, I can understand what current is and therefore be able to apply that understanding to the situation. But in this case here, I mean, you just heard me spout off the current ratio, you know, current assets over current liabilities. Right? Um, and yeah, I memorized them. So in this case here, you might want to spend some time uh, and memorize these ratios, okay? Of course, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't understand how the ratios work so that you comply them to the situation. Okay. All right. So with all of that said as an overview, um, I'm going to you know, stop the video here and we'll pick up with our uh, first bullet point here, why you know, financial reports slash statements in the next video.